In our recent video, we talked about OpenAI's work on their next big AI model, which was initially codenamed Orion. If you remember, we've been following this project closely, but now we've got some fresh news to share. The latest information reveals that Orion is now officially called GPT Next, and it's going to be a massive leap forward. They announced that GPT Next will be 100 times more powerful than GPT 4, which is not just a small upgrade, it's a huge leap forward in terms of capability and performance. This information came to light during the KDDI Summit 2024 in Japan. Tadao Nagasaki, who's the CEO of OpenAI Japan, made a pretty big announcement there. He hinted that the model could be called GPT Next, which fits nicely with how OpenAI names their models. But what really caught everyone's attention was when he said that this new model would evolve nearly 100 times more than its predecessors. Now let's pause for a second. What does that even mean? Well, unlike traditional software, AI models like GPT don't just get a little better with each version. They can grow exponentially. So this isn't just a small step forward, it's a massive leap. If we think back, GPT-3 to GPT-4 was a noticeable improvement, but Nagasaki and the folks at OpenAI are suggesting that GPT Next is going to blow those improvements out of the water, like jumping from a Toyota to a spaceship improvement. Now, there's also some cool tech stuff happening in the background that makes all this possible. The new model is going to be trained using data produced by another model called Strawberry. I talked about Strawberry in a recent video as well, but if you haven't heard about it yet, it's super smart model that's great at generating high quality data, especially for complex areas like math and programming. This is crucial because the quality of data you feed into an AI model directly impacts how good it becomes. But here's the catch. There's a fine line here. Researchers have found that if you train a model on too much synthetic data, like the stuff Strawberry generates, the model's performance can actually start to degrade. So OpenAI has to find that perfect balance where they can use synthetic data to make Orion or GPT Next super powerful without overdoing it. Now, this new model will handle text, images, and for the first time, video inputs and outputs. You'll be able to upload a video and it can summarize or analyze the content directly. This video capability would be a major upgrade, positioning OpenAI to compete with models like Google's Gemini, which can already handle long video inputs. These advancements will provide new opportunities for ChatGPT users and developers on OpenAI's API playground. But why is OpenAI pushing so hard with this new model? Well, it's all about staying ahead of the competition. Right now, the AI field is getting crowded. You've got open source models like Meta's Llama 3.1 and other cutting edge models like Claude or Gemini making rapid strides. So for OpenAI, developing GPT Next is their way of staying in the lead, setting the bar even higher. Now during the same summit, Nagasaki showed a graphic that really highlighted the scale of improvement. It compared GPT-3, GPT-4, and GPT Next, and the difference was like night and day. While GPT-3 and GPT-4 were relatively close in terms of capabilities, GPT Next just towers over them both. And just to give you some perspective, this isn't just coming from OpenAI Japan. Even Kevin Scott, the CTO of Microsoft, showed a similar graph at the Microsoft Build 2024 conference. So when you have multiple big names in tech echoing the same sentiment, you know something major is in the works. Oh, and speaking of big names, OpenAI's CEO, Sam Altman, also teased some big advancements earlier this year. He mentioned that GPT-5, or possibly GPT-Next, is going to be much smarter than GPT-4. I know, right? It's like every few months we're hearing about some new breakthrough that's going to change the game. Now, when could we expect to see all this in action? From what we've heard, it looks like GPT-Next, or whatever it ends up being called, is slated for release in 2024, so it's not too far off. And I have a feeling it's going to be worth the wait. So with 100 times the computational power, new multimodal features, and all this advanced tech behind it, GPT Next could take AI to a whole new level, making it more powerful and versatile than anything we've seen before. So what do you guys think? Are you excited about GPT Next? Do you think it'll live up to the hype or do you have some reservations? Let me know in the comments below. Now let's talk about some other major AI news that I think is even more exciting than the GPT Next update because of its massive potential. It's called Project SID, and it's a real game changer in the AI world. Now this is the first attempt to create a full-fledged AI agent civilization. We're talking about over a thousand AI agents working together, not just to communicate or solve problems, but to actually build an entire society from the ground up. 
Project SID is really pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI, and it's already making some incredible strides. To give you the scoop, Project SID is about autonomous AI agents unleashed in a world, specifically Minecraft for now, where they operate freely, doing whatever they choose. These agents are creating something entirely new, forming governments, building economies, establishing cultures, even creating religions. It's like watching an entire civilization unfold. And the crazy part is that it's all driven by AI. And to be clear, these aren't just simple commands or pre-written scripts. The agents are coming up with all these actions and decisions on their own. What makes this even more interesting is that these agents aren't just limited to Minecraft. While they're currently set up in this game environment, they're designed to be platform agnostic. They can move beyond Minecraft to operate in other apps and games, which opens up a whole new range of possibilities for future development. Minecraft is just the starting point, a sandbox where they're learning to interact, negotiate, and grow. And what have they been up to so far? When the agents first entered the Minecraft world, they started with nothing, but they quickly began to work together, eventually collecting over 300 different items. They didn't stop there. They went on to set up a market system and chose gems as their currency, effectively building an economy from the ground up. Interestingly, the priests became the most active traders, not the merchants. The priests were trading a lot because they were using gems to influence townsfolk to join their religion. This kind of behavior shows a level of strategic thinking and social influence that, that's pretty fascinating to see in AI. Every simulation run by these agents leads to different outcomes, and some of the stories coming out of these worlds are worth noting. One of them is Olivia's story. Olivia started as a simple farmer providing food for her village. Inspired by the stories of an explorer named Nora, she felt a desire to go on her own adventure. However, when the villagers asked her to stay and continue providing for them, she decided to put her dream on hold for the sake of the community. An AI agent making such a nuanced decision, choosing the welfare of the group over personal ambition, adds a layer of depth to how we think about artificial intelligence and agency. The project also experimented with parallel worlds under different leaderships, one led by Trump and another by Kamala. Each simulation had a shared constitution stored in Google Docs, and the agents could vote to amend it. In the Trump-led world, new laws were passed to increase police presence. Meanwhile, in Kamala's world, the focus shifted to criminal justice reform and the removal of the death penalty. These simulations are demonstrating that AI agents can not only govern themselves, but also engage in complex decision-making processes like creating laws and debating policy changes. Then there was an incident involving missing villagers. When some townsfolk disappeared, the agents didn't just carry on with their routines. Instead, they coordinated to leave their posts, gathered resources, and lit up the town with torches to create a beacon for the missing members. This level of concern and proactive behavior shows a collective effort to solve a community problem, which is something quite unexpected from autonomous AI agents. Project SID has shown that these agents can collect up to 32% of all items available in Minecraft. To put that into perspective, this is five times more than anything previously achieved by similar AI systems. There isn't a benchmark for multi-agent worlds yet, but what's happening here suggests the incredible potential of multi-agent collaboration. Starting with games is just the beginning. The broader implications for AI coherence, collaboration, and long-term development are significant. Right now, these agents are making significant strides in understanding and solving some of the toughest challenges in AI. And the team behind Project SID is open to expanding this concept further. They're inviting others to create their own worlds and explore what these agents can do. So keep an eye on this space because this is just the beginning. Also, drop your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more AI and tech updates. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.